Well, of course, the Midlands engine has many opportunities, but it also faces challenges. Uh, challenges in housing, challenges in our education system, challenges in our infrastructure. Getting about the region is so important if we're to drive economic growth. But I'm optimistic we'll deal with those challenges together. The opportunities, I think, are probably unique, best for the last uh, 40 years. And they really come from the work that's been done recently to get our economy in a much stronger position. And we've got strength in some of the sectors that are going to be so important to the future. Transport, energy, advanced manufacturing, professional services, life sciences. So actually we can say the high growth sectors are concentrated here. The challenges really are how we make the most of our opportunities and particularly how we develop the skills in our workforce to meet those opportunities. I think devolution's already given us cash, actually, an opportunity to invest. So if you look at the expansion of our public transport systems that we've got at the moment, extension of the metro, potential new rail stations, that's come through devolution, which is brilliant. What devolution's also given us is cash to invest in accelerating house delivery, which is home delivery, which is really important as well. But I think going forward, it's got to give us something more than that, actually. It's the power to take control of our own destiny plan our own futures. And there wasn't as much of that in the first deal. The cash was brilliant. I want to get more of that power in the second deal as well. So I do see digital, I mean brilliant in digital, as something that sort of cuts across all areas of the economy. It's not a sector on its own. People don't do digital. All companies in every sector are being digitised. Think how people change their lives. Whether it's getting your Uber, whether it's buying from Jonas.com, whether it's actually how your record in a hospital is kept, everything's been changed by digital. And the regions of the world that are going to be the most successful will be the ones that can really get on the front foot of that innovation. So I want us to really step change our capability there. The sort of challenge to all the speakers today, and I think delegates as well, is to call out three priorities. And I think it's actually very straightforward that there are three really big levers that will improve everybody's lives. And they are the quality of our transport, the quality and quantity and variety of our housing, and the skills that the workforce have. That's about new opportunities, particularly for young people in life. So they're three really big subjects, I know. But and there's lots of other political priorities, of course, and uh, we're not going to ignore them. But those are the three really massive levers that the WMCA can pull. I think that the West Midlands has, has changed massively recently, and I think that um, almost to a certain extent rather than concentrating on challenges it would be great to look at the positive things that we have going on but of course it would be silly of me to sit here and say that we don't have challenges we do have challenges we have challenges like any city um, we have challenges in my sector in particular in commercial around availability of land and probably a lack of a strategic planning piece i think west mid's combined authority is making a big difference to that and i think availability of land and looking at how we can really fully use utilize our brownfield sites in the best way possible is going to be key to regenerating the area. One of the main ones, as I just said, is strategic planning. It's bringing forward land where land can be brought forward. It's perhaps identifying those sites. It's always contentious to talk about green fields, um, but maybe we need to look at that again. Um, I know that a shortage of land has been identified and we need to take that further on to the next step. We need to look at it as a holistic approach and not just only identify those sites. I suppose the other thing to talk about is funding. West Mid's Combined Authority and Finance Birmingham have been key in helping us deliver some of our sites recently and I see that those bodies as being a key funding partner, both public, private, equity, debt, grant, funding, etc. as being really important for us to drive um, development going forward. And I suppose, lastly, I think another really key thing that we often overlook is waving the flag being proud about being from Birmingham and being proud about what we're doing in our area. We've had huge amounts of investment, probably more so than any city in the UK in the last 12 months. And I think that is set to continue. And we, as people who are active in the property industry, need to make sure that that does happen. And the way that we do that is by flying the flag for Birmingham and being proud about being here. I think um, I'm going to pick, I'm going to be awkward and pick two big things rather than three big things. The reason I'm doing that is that I think transport 
is actually in quite a good place at the moment in terms of the amount of investment that's going in and what's being done to move transport forward. And I think Laura Schoff and her team are doing a great job on that. So my two big things are on housing and the enormously important work of the Housing and Land Commission and the importance of both political and technical conversations to sort out the way forward on housing strategy and even more to the point, getting the houses built. My second big thing is actually to do with education, training and skills. And that is a massively collaborative effort between the education sector, public and private sector, um, and particularly our world famous and local institutions across the West Midlands. We've got fantastic capacity here. We're probably not coordinating it all as well as we might do. I think the combined authority can certainly help in that. And then within our sub-regions within the region, we need to be doing some really good connective work on that. And that goes for us in Birmingham and in Solihull, and also for our colleagues uh, in the other sub-regions as well. One of the issues about the West Midlands is that because it's so geographically large, it's quite possible to go from one year end to the next without necessarily having the sort of conversations you should be having with people. And so to have those opportunities to come together in a relatively free way and find those points of commonality and just as important, those points of difference so that you can then seek to navigate a way through them, I think is incredibly important. For me, three things, well, we talked about skills, that, that is um, a, a, a year by year challenge um, to make sure we've, uh, we've got that pipeline coming through. Um, and, and as I said before, we do a lot in, uh, in schools and, and educational establishments to, to try and draw that into the business. Um, another major challenge for us um, you know, going forward is having the right kind of power infrastructure. So, as we move from the in in internal combustion engine to the aut aut autonomous connected electric vehicles, there's going to be a much greater power draw. Um, you know, as we charge these these products, um, both in the public and and at home and at places of work. So, there's going to be you know quite a lot of demand um, uh, to put um, charging infrastructure um, across the region, and we want to be leaders in that so that's that's a, a, a big challenge for us to push forward um, I guess the, the the third thing slightly off the the beat of uh, the West Midlands combined authority but um, as a the biggest exporter of product outside of the UK at the moment um, you know, we're challenging government to think through um, making sure that the the brexit outcome that will um, uh, arrive at in the next couple of years is friendly to, to exporters like Jaguar Land Rover, and we don't want to be fa we w we want to have you know tariff free trade, so we don't want to be faced with tariffs for components that are coming into the country or, or for our vehicles that we export. You know there there isn't just one thing that you need to do to you know drive growth in the region. There are so many different constituent parts, and there are lots of different um, you know bodies and, and people who can impact that. Um, you know, from industry, through to universities, the local authorities, um, the LEPs themselves. Um, so bringing them together and getting them aligned around what it is that we're trying to achieve, I think is, is very, very important. So as long as we've got that in mind, then it's worth having conferences, yeah.